Most Americans want to believe that the United States is the gold standard of clean food. But that belief may not hold up to scrutiny. From unsanitary practices in mass production to the addition of dangerous chemicals, countries have good reason to give the side-eye to imported foods claiming to be USDA-approved. That's right, this week we're talking about American foods that have been banned by other countries. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. Then leave a comment and tell us what other world food facts you would like to know more about. Now let's see how wrong the rest of the world really is. Since the dawn of Skittles, there have been rumors about the dangers of eating them. Every one of us heard at least one classmate claim that the red ones make you sterile, and the yellow ones, they give you cancer. Turns out, it might be worse than that. First of all, your classmate wasn't wrong. The dyes known as yellow 5 and yellow 6 have been linked to hives and hyperactivity in children. Sweden and Norway have banned the candies out of concern. The European Union will most likely be banning Skittles at the end of the year, having already swapped out some of the dye for more natural flavors. This is because of something called titanium dioxide, which can be found making the colors pop across the rainbow. Research linked titanium dioxide to damaged DNA, which can lead to cancer. While Europe may be ahead of the Skittles awareness curve, America is quickly catching up. In May of 2021, the Environmental Working Group asked the FDA to categorize titanium dioxide as toxic. And yes, before you ask, right now the FDA says it's okay to consume some of that chemical compound. You can taste the rainbow, but just in moderation. California is home to an ongoing lawsuit against Mars Inc., the parent company of Skittles. The lawsuit claims Skittles are not only toxic, but are unfit for human consumption. So maybe for now, play it safe. Just go have some Swedish fish instead. Ever looked at a piece of crusty French baguette, be it in cartoon or in real life, but let's be honest, it was probably in the hands of Pepe Le Pew, and think, I can't make a sandwich with that. As great as we talk about the invention of sliced bread, a lot of European countries have actually banned much of what you'd find on America's wide, wide grocer shelves. That's because we make a lot of our bread not just with grain, but with a variety snack packs worth of additives like azodicarbonamide, for example, which helps bleach flour and strengthen dough. Fun fact about azodicarbonamide, it's also used in a spectrum of industrial products, including yoga mats. Mmm, downward dogs. The European Union is really against the idea of its citizens eating yoga mat material and has banned their use in food products. Pork, the other white meat, is a staple of American meats along with chicken, fish, and beef. From bacon to ham, hot dogs to pork chops, American meat eaters consume about 67 pounds of pig per person every year. Sue-wee, my heart is stopping. Don't get us wrong, other nations indulge in swine just as much, if not more, than Americans. So why doesn't the U.S. export scores of succulent bacon-bearing boars? Well, it turns out America adds a lot of chemicals during processing. Ractopamine in particular is used in many pig farms to raise porkier porkers. Ractopamine, which we put a dash of in a lot of foods, has been banned in 160 countries, which all consider the drug unsafe for human consumption. This in turn has led to a prohibition of pork exports across the world. The EU hasn't touched the stuff since outlawing Ractopamine in 2009. China and Russia have been ractopamine-less since 2013. Maybe that's because ractopamine has the same effects as an intoxicant on humans and can cause tachycardia, headaches, and muscle spasms if consumed in large enough quantities. But it is a small price to pay for a perfect piece of the pork. Hygiene in America often comes down to dousing stuff in a chlorine bath and calling it FDA approved, and chicken is no exception. Pathogen reduction treatments, or PRTs, refer to the use of different chemicals to destroy harmful microbes on raw meat. Somewhere along the line, American food regulators decided a quick chlorine shock was the best way to kill salmonella and other bacteria on uncooked poultry. Mmm, mmm, chlorine marinade. 
And look, it's not that the EU is against taking a long gulp from the public pool now and then. In fact, the risks posed by chlorine consumption are relatively low. The bigger concern is that the chlorine baths are just an eye-burning band-aid on a larger problem. The tip of the beak, so to speak. They're worried that the PRTs are insufficient to deal with more than just the normal bacteria and don't get at a potential contamination from things like low-quality feed to unsanitary coops on farms. The EU called the chlorine rinse an easy fix, arguing no chemical rinse will ever remove all bacteria from meat heavily contaminated as a result of poor hygiene. That hurts extra to hear it from the French. Mountain Dew is the closest any soft drink has come to being fully weaponized. But did you know in Austria and Norway, the soda is outright banned? That's because Mountain Dew's signature Chernobyl Radiant Hue comes from Tartrazine, also known as Yellow 5. And if your ADHD hasn't kicked in yet, you'll remember that color and number from the Skittles section earlier. It's been linked to headaches, hyperactivity, and the desire to be annoying to other people. Ironically, the qualities that make Mountain Dew a soda non gratis in other countries is exactly what the brand promotes, a frenetic, over-caffeinated lifestyle. Do the do. Baja Blast. Woo-hoo. And while you might be able to find Mountain Dew in Europe, it's going to hit a little different. That's because Europe spent exactly two years in the 90s riding the Dew before discontinuing it. What is being sold as Mountain Dew in the EU as a recipe closer to the original carbonated beverage, as created by Tennessee beverage bottlers Barney and Ollie Hartman in the 1940s. The original Mountain Dew was meant as a whiskey mixer, with a name coming from the affectionate Scottish term for moonshine. It'll tickle your innards, is what the old ads used to read. No lies detected here. Yahoo! Mountain Dew! <laughs> Little Debbie has been providing Americans with comfort snack food since the 1960s, with their variety of zebra cakes, star crunches, nutty bars, fudge rounds, and cosmic brownies. But their big claim to fame, as anyone who has ever had their lunch packed by a parent can attest, is the Little Debbie Swiss Rolls, a mixture of rich chocolate cake and buttercreamy filling. Over 900 million cartons of Little Debbie products are shipped each year, but none of those cartons go anywhere near Austria or Norway. Blame those rascally additives, Yellow 5 and Red 40. Swiss rolls contain 32 milligrams of dye per product, and in those quantities, they've been shown to have an adverse effect on children. And we're not just talking about causing hyperactivity, although one study found that cutting all artificial food coloring from diets may be one half as effective as prescribing kids Ritalin. And while we can't prove there's a direct connection between artificial food coloring and cancer, they do cause damage to white blood cells, causing them to mutate after only three hours. Exposure to these dyes could cause tumor cells to multiply way more rapidly. For that reason, researchers say a high chronic intake of food colorings throughout the entire life is not advisable. If only they weren't so delicious. Surprisingly, you can buy Little Debbie Swiss Rolls in the EU, but they come with warning labels advising parents of the potential dangers to kids. You know, like cigarettes. When you hear the words banned breakfast cereal, you're probably imagining one of the countless kid-focused brands of sugary morsels, like the oh-so-delicious Cookie Crisp. So you might be surprised to learn that it's actually Special K, the most boring cereal on all of the earth, that has been banned in Denmark and discouraged in the EU. How does the healthiest box of flakes on the shelf get banned, while stuff like Reese's Puffs and Cinnamon Toast Crunch continue to enjoy free passage? Ironically, because of its supposed health benefits. In the UK, Special K has been put on blast by the Advertising Standards Authority for exaggerating how much folic acid they pack into portions. Though it's still legal to buy in Europe, Denmark has completely banned Special K since 2004 for all its fortified vitamins and minerals. Regulators argue that Kellogg's cereal's unnaturally high levels of everything from vitamin A to zinc actually qualify Special K as a genetically modified organism, or GMO. More specifically, Special K is swole with the same artificial compounds that studies have shown to potentially pose health risks, specifically to children and pregnant women. In conclusion, you may want to stick with Crunch Berries.
You don't need to take a transcontinental flight to visit countries that have banned American foods. Just drive up to the Canadian border, flash your passport, and sign an affidavit saying you're not smuggling any steak tartare in your trunk. Today, consuming raw meat has fallen out of fashion in the U.S., much like other foods like veal and pate, which don't make you sick but might make you sad. But while baby cow and overstuffed goose liver is illegal in parts of America now, tartare is not. See, while veal and pate may be uncool, they are also served hot, unlike tartare, which is chopped up cold meat straight from the cow. Undercooked or raw foods can lead to an increase in food poisoning and parasitic infections, especially in beef and poultry. But considering how fancy pants steak tartare is, titanic food one might say, you'd think countries might look the other way and let the luxury delicacy slide. And for a long time they did. In Canada, meat has to reach an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of a medium rare steak, in order to be considered safe to serve. But those rules aren't strictly enforced. That is, until recently. In 2021, restaurant owners in New Brunswick selling steak tartare were all served cease and desist letters. Canadian public health officials had decided that amid the ongoing health crisis of COVID-19, the last thing their citizens needed was a side order of botulism. Is there anything more American than Coca-Cola? The fizz, the flavor, the former secret ingredient, cocaine. Coke is basically apple pie in beverage form. And it's not just Americans who are a cuckoo for Coke. Invented by a pharmacist in 1886 Georgia, Coca-Cola quickly caught on overseas. It was the World War II GI's drink of choice. Pre-pandemic, Coca-Cola had 500 brands in over 200 countries, making it the best-selling soft drink and one of the most recognizable brands of all time. But there will always be exceptions. And unlike the other entries on the list, for once, it has nothing to do with health concerns. Everybody knows that Coke is not good for you. We just decided collectively that we don't care. No, the countries that have outlawed the brand have done so because of what it represents, a symbol of the encroachment of American capitalism. From 1962 to 2011, the US banned sales of Coke to Burma as part of sanctions against the military junta that ruled the country until 2011. It resumed sales in the country in 2012. Today, Coca-Cola is only unavailable in two countries with long-term trade embargoes with the US. North Korea hasn't allowed Coke since 1950, and the bubbly beverage has been banned in Cuba since Fidel Castro seized supplies in 1962. First the prequels, now Coke. Is there anything that can't be ruined by the federalization of trade taxation? In a twist of irony and uh, lime, Cuba was actually one of the first bottlers of the beverage outside of America. Today, Cuba Cola has replaced Coke as the country's soft drink of choice, though black market sales abound. After all, it is the birthplace of the Cuba Libra, aka the rum and coke. M and M's, the delicious melt-in-your-mouth, not-in-your-hand snacks, were originally a collaboration between the Cyan Sons of the Mars and Hershey dynasties in 1941. Like Coca-Cola, M and M's gained international fans during World War II. As American soldiers popularized the candy overseas, as the chocolate that won't get your trigger finger all sticky. But you won't find the candy in Sweden where it's banned due to a trademark conflict with a popular national candy that also features lowercase m's as its signature. When Mars introduced the candy to Sweden in 2009, a court ruled its marketing too similar to that of the Norwegian Marabous, which resemble Kit Kats. During World War I, Marabou had moved its manufacturing to its Swedish neighbors, where it received a royal warrant of appointment by the King of Sweden. And here we thought the Swiss were the chocolate snobs. Should you want to check out what the fuss is all about, Marabou's is sold in IKEA stores here in the U.S. Well, at least it's good to know that M&Ms don't contain any harmful dyes or chlorine residue, right? That's a pretty important victory for hard-shelled chocolate. So what do you think? Which of these banned foods sounds the most delicious? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Weird History Food.